We're on lecture four, where we're discussing um, what is called revenue analysis. In this lecture, we're going to look at partly how to differentiate. So we'll do some calculus in here. The Boolean revenue analysis. So we're going to understand terms like total revenue, total cost, and the profit. So to start with, the concepts that you need to learn are concepts of total cost, total revenue, marginal cost, marginal revenue, average cost, average revenue. And we'll discuss the nature of a firm and how to maximize its revenues. We'll also look at um, welfare, government intervention, what happens when government intervenes in um, these markets, mainly the perfectly competitive market. To start with, we're going to have a list of terms that we need to understand. We have what we call total revenue. Total revenue is simply the product of the price and the quantity. When you multiply these two, we get what we call total revenue. So for instance, you have item cost five quarter. And these items are 10. Our total revenue will therefore be five quarter times 10, which is 50 quarter. So this is what we call our total revenue. Anything divided by Quantity is called average. So total revenue divided by quantity is average revenue. So if we had 50, we divide it by the number of items that we have that in items, the average revenue becomes five, which is usually the price in a perfectly competitive market. All right. Then we have what we call marginal revenue. Marginal revenue is simply calculated as the ratio in the change in the total revenue to the quantity sold. It is additional units that you get from an extra sale. For instance, if your sales were as follows, we have two, five, 10, and maybe 20. Our total revenue are these sales that we have. We have two quarter, five quarter, 10 quarter, 20 quarter. Addition from one unit to the other is called our marginal revenue. So our marginal revenue in this case is three at this point and five at this point and 10 at this point. So marginal is simply the additional. When you hear the term marginal, we're simply looking at the additional unit, additional revenue. We go to the total cost function. We need to understand that we have two kinds of costs that every firm must have, what we call the fixed and the variable costs. Collectively, when we add these two, we get what we call the total cost. So total costs, is a function in terms of quantity, which has the fixed and the variable cost. What are fixed costs? Fixed costs are simply costs which are spent on the fixed factors of production, like machinery and buildings. These are capital expenditure. These costs are also fixed in the sense that they don't increase with output. They are fixed. Variable costs are simply costs that change with volume. The higher the volume, the higher the variable costs. The lower the volume, the lower the variable costs. And so, times we're given fixed costs, we spend a hundred thousand and each cost would be two quarter, 20 quarter per unit. So our total cost will therefore be 
hundred plus twenty Q. So this becomes our function of the total cost in terms of Q. The constant variable here is our fixed cost. The one with letter is variable. So this is how our total cost function looks like. So like I said, average is anything divided by quantity. The total cost has two kinds of costs. We have the total fixed cost and total variable costs. If we divide each of these ones by Q, the P will now become an A. Our total cost becomes our average total cost. Our total fixed cost becomes our average fixed cost. Our total variable cost becomes our average variable costs. So this is what we get. So when we divide the total cost by quantity, it's called average total cost, which is simply the total cost divided by the output. Output in economics is denoted by the letter Q. So Q is the quantity of output in unit. So like I said, the additional units are incremental units are called marginal. So these costs, when we add additional costs, for instance, our costs were initially 10 quacha, 15 quacha, 18 quacha, 21 quacha, going on, 8 quacha. So, these are called total costs, but the addition from one to the other unit, for instance, here we have increased by five, have increased by six, have increased by nine. These are called marginal costs. So the marginal cost is simply the change in total cost that has been incurred as a result in an additional unit in production. So if you're using calculus, we're differentiating C over dq, dc over dq. So in our previous class, we had briefly explained how to differentiate the two terms. y is equal to a x, and when you differentiate y over the x, we get a differential in a n minus one. So we are simply multiplying this by that and subtracting one from the power. So using an example, if you have five x to the power four, differentiating this is the letter this side over the letter that side. The change in y, we use the letter dy over dx. This will give us what? 20 x to the power what? three. Since we are subtracting, one from that, and I'm applying these two numbers. If we're given in terms of total revenue, as for instance, 170 Q minus 5 Q squared. This is called TR over the Q. The letter this side is TR. The letter this side is Q. We are told that whenever we're differentiating the total revenue, it becomes an M, it's called marginal revenue. So 170 Q, there's a one there. So one times 170 is 170. One minus one is zero, so the Q comes off. When you apply two times 10, two times five is 10. When you subtract a one from there, we're going to remain with one. So this is called our marginal revenue. What if we were given total cost as 10 plus 2Q? Likewise, it will be dtc over the what? Over the Q. So we said total cost becomes marginal cost. So the P becomes an M. So since we have a constant here which has no letter, it drops out. But 2Q becomes 2. Any number with just a letter 
to the power one remains that particular number. So in a quick nutshell, differentiating these numbers here, 4Q3, 9Q, 5, 10Q, 100, 8Q, quickly differentiate these ones. What do we get for Q3 when we differentiate it? What is for Q3 differentiate it? We simply multiplying that. 12Q squared. 12Q squared. What do we get when differentiate 9Q5? Twenty-five Q four. We get when differentiate ten Q. Ten. Ten. What do we get when differentiate hundred? Zero or nothing. What do we get when differentiate Q two? Sixteen Q. Exactly. So this is basically what we call differentiation. Now we are going to apply this differentiation in what we call revenue analysis or optimization. So what have we said? These M's are very important. It stands for what? Price. Q stands for what? Quantity or output. PR stands for what? Total what? Revenue. When you differentiate it, it changes to MR, which is what? Marginal revenue. TR over the Q. And when you divide it by quantity, by differentiating, it becomes average revenue, which is AR. So MR, marginal revenue. AR, average revenue. C stands for what? Total what? Cost. M M C stands for what? Marginal cost. Simply found by differentiating the total cost of a quantity. ETC by total cost. Simply found by the total cost divided by quantity. AFC by fixed cost found by the total fixed cost divided by quantity. AVC, average variable cost, which is found by the total variable cost over what? Quantity. This pi stands for the profit. It is simply the difference total revenue minus the total cost. When you differentiate the profit with respect to quantity, it's called the what? Marginal profit. Anything marginal and you get it to zero, you're optimizing. Marginal revenue, you get it to zero, what are you doing? Maximizing the total revenue, that is the maximum total revenue. Mm -hmm. Equated to zero or MR when equated to MC, doing the same thing. What are you doing? Maximizing profit, earning the maximum profit. How about MC when equated to zero? 
minimizing the total cost. You don't maximize cost, you minimize them. All these collectively is what we call optimization. So I was trying to explain what is denote. So some calculus again, let's differentiate. TR is 75Q minus 4Q squared. When you differentiate it, TR becomes marginal revenue. 75Q becomes 75. 100Q becomes 100. 20Q becomes 20. As long as it's just a number, the letter which is not powered, you just maintain that number. Why? Because there's an invisible one there. One times that number, one minus one, it comes out. 4Q2 becomes 8Q. So this is called our marginal revenue. Total cost differentiated becomes marginal cost. An invisible one there. So two times one is two. And two minus one is one. So here we just remain with two Q. Seven Q becomes seven. 23 is out because it is a what? Constant. Let's try to differentiate the following. 5, U, 3, minus 14, Q, 2, plus 8. This is 1 over 3, Q, 3, minus 3Q2 plus 4. So can you lead me through? How do we differentiate this? Yes, so the first equation, uh, dtr over dq, this will be marginal revenue. And uh, three will multiply with the five, which is 15 Q. It, the Q cubed will become squared minus 28 Q. Plus uh, okay, the, Z, the, the constant uh, goes off, so it ends there. All right, Conrad, can you help us differentiate this? DC over Q will give us what? Marginal cost. So one third and three is one. And three, we subtract one, what do we get? Q to the power. And here, when differentiate, three Q two, what do we get? We get a six Q. This is called a marginal cost. All right, so we go to the nature of the firm and the rule of revenue maximization. So economists is frequently called to help maximize profit, minimize costs, maximize the physical output and productivity, minimize the levels of pollution, and to use scarce resources optimally. So in calculating the profit, which is given by pi, profit is simply given by total revenue minus total cost. So to maximize this, we differentiate the profit and equate to zero. D pi over the Q, we simply equate to zero. This is how we maximize profit. All right. Similarly, we can simply multiply, we equate the marginal revenue 
to the marginal cost. I already explained all this. It's another way of maximizing profit. We said profit is simply the difference between the total revenue and that's what? Total cost. Profit only occurs when total revenue exceeds our total cost. Otherwise, this is called loss if we get what? Negative. Whenever total revenue is less than the total cost, go into what we call loss. It is uh, normal for firms to undergo such. So when we differentiate our total cost with respect to quantity, we call it marginal cost. Total revenue with respect to quantity, we call it marginal revenue. When we equate them, this is what we call our profit. Now, profit is simply the point where total revenue exceeds the total cost. At this point here, you see our total revenue is greater than what? Our total cost. If you're advising a firm, you produce between Q1 and Q2, because above Q2, we're going to under go a loss and below q1 in the area b this is a loss the area between b and c is called the profit and so the point at which the total profit total revenue and the total cost meet these ones are called the breakpoint point these are points where we are neither making a profit or a loss we're not neither making a profit or a loss. In short, a point when your profit is actually zero. Are we together? All right. So this example here, we've been given our demand function, and we've been given our cost function, which will come later on. So we are told that P is equal to uh, 2 Q, 30 minus 2 Q. So we're being asked to calculate the revenue. So since we know total revenue is price times quantity, where there's price, we put 30 minus 2 Q. Where there's quantity, we impute it. We are never given the actual quantity. So 30 by Q is 30 Q. 2 Q by Q is 2 Q squared. So this is what we call total revenue. To get the marginal revenue, we need to differentiate this. 30Q becomes what? 2Q squared becomes what? Our 4Q. So how then do we maximize revenue? Whenever the M's are equal to zero, we maximize the revenue. When we get this to zero, we're going to have 30 is equal to 4Q. We divide both sides by what? By four. So we divide here by four and there by four. Our Q is actually going to be 7.5. Our Q will be 7.5. So 7.5 unit to maximize our profit, our revenue, sorry. So how do we find the price? We substitute this Q we found here in this function. Put times uh, uh, 7.5, what we get? 15. So 30 minus 15, our P is equal to 15. So this is what will maximize total revenue. This is a quadratic equation usually to look something like this here. We have our zero there and we have our 15. For 15, 7.5. 7.5 is the one that we just found here and that maximizes total revenue. So this total revenue here, we can calculate it if you want. Since we know that total revenue is price times quantity, our price is 15, our quantity is 7.5. When we compute that, it can actually give us the actual total profit that is being maximized. Give us the actual total profit is being maximized. 
So if you multiply 7.5, multiply it by the 15, you get yourself 112.5. So this 112.5 is the actual revenue at which we maximize I repeat, you be given a function like this. We ask for four important things. Number one, calculate the total revenue. The total revenue is price times quantity. The price is this whole function. The quantity is Q. So 30 times Q is 30Q. 2Q times Q is 2Q squared. You get your max there to max. Number two, find the total revenue. Uh, the average uh, marginal revenue. Marginal revenue is when you differentiate this function. So 30Q becomes 30. Q squared becomes 4Q. You're done. You get the max here for differentiating. And they ask you to maximize revenue. So maximizing revenue is when MR is got what? Zero. So when we put this to zero, the four goes this side, it becomes a positive. We divide by four on both sides, our Q becomes 7.5. 7.5, you put it back in the original price function to get our price as 15. So this is the price and quantity that maximizes total revenue. You get your three max for this. And finally, we ask you what is the actual total revenue? Total revenue, you can substitute this Q, the 7.5, in this function. Here, put 7.5, 7.5. Or just multiply the two price and quantity directly to give you the total revenue at which those are uh, the price and quantity that maximizes total revenue. So let's try to do this exercise together. Please, let's be objective. We're given the demand function as follows, 40 minus 2Q. The fixed cost is what? N, and the variable cost is what? Half Q2 plus 5Q. Already, we're being asked to find expressions for total average and marginal cost, and total average and marginal revenue. So for total costs, we know that total cost is got what? Fixed cost. As variable cost, good. The variable fixed cost has been given as what? 10. Put your 10 there. And the variable cost has been given as what? Half, Half Q squared, Q squared plus, five. plus 5Q. In there. So this is a total cost. Average cost. What is the average? Uh, total cost, cost uh, divided by uh, quantity. Total quantity. So total cost divided by quantity. So you divide each individual here, right? Quantity, by quantity, by quantity. So this part here will remain as what? N over Q. This part here will remain as what? Half, but with one Q, Q. Since the Qs were two. This last part here will remain with no Q. That's five. All right. Of course, this one is called your average fixed cost if you want. This one is called your average variable cost. To find the marginal cost, you differentiate the cost function. So we are 10 plus half Q squared plus five Q. When differentiate, this, the 10 falls out. We are simply going to have what? Q. And here going to remain with what? Five. So this is what our marginal cost will be. So let's go through. Total cost is what? Fixed cost plus variable cost. This is 10 plus 0 5 Q squared plus 5 Q. Get two max there. How do we get our average total cost? Total cost over quantity. So here, I advise that you spread the quantity throughout because People have a mathematical error, they'll just divide at one point. So divide by Q here, divide by Q there, divide by Q there. So this will remain with over Q. This will remain with 0 0.5 at one Q. 0 0.5 is the same as half. And if it has a fraction, 
or even a 0 0.5. The Q here will cancel with that to remain with a five. How do we get the marginal cost? We need to differentiate this and drop it here. We have one Q. Whenever I write one, so we're just going to have what? Q. So we're going to have Q there. Here we're going to have five. So what are we going to have? Q plus five, which is our marginal cost. So you get your two max there, and you get your two max there. Are we following? Yes. All right. And we're given our demand function as follows 40 minus what? Q. So, how do you find the total revenue? Total revenue is p times quantity. 40 minus 2q, then we multiply by the quantity. So, 40 by q is 42. 2q by q is 2q squared. So, this is our total revenue. Average revenue, we divide this total revenue by quantity. Ideally, we can also just divide this part by quantity. Average revenue goes back to the price itself, usually. So average revenue will come out as a price, especially for a pretty competitive market. So we get four minus two. And how do you find the marginal cost? Our marginal cost will be 40 Q minus Q square, uh, two Q squared when you differentiate this one here. Take Q becomes what? 40. Q squared becomes what? 4 Q becomes our marginal revenue. If you're asked to maximize revenue, you simply put this to zero, and this one goes the other side. So we're going to have 40 is equal to 4Q. So when we divide both sides by 4, our Q becomes what? And yeah. this, yeah. and when you put it here, we're going to have 20. 40 minus 20, meaning our P is going to be what? 20. 40. It's going to be 20. 40 minus 20, 20 which is what? 20. Which is 20. Are we following? Yeah. Yes. All right. So this will be your homework. I will require of you to do it. Need you to maximize our profit. Let me try it because at what point do we maximize profit? There are two ways. You find the total profit. MR is equal to MC. Good. MR is equal to MC. So what is our MR in differentiate this part? MR will be what? 4,000 minus 66 Q. 4,000 minus 66 Q. Excellent. Here, MC. What do we get when differentiate? 6 Q squared minus 6 uh, Q plus 400. What happened to this constant? It drops out. We equate these two. All right. We're going to say 4,000 and a 66Q is equal to what? 6Q squared. 6Q squared. And a 6Q plus what? Plus 400. Okay. So we put the like terms together. All right, so we want to remain with the zero this side. So we have six Q squared minus 66. Mm. What is this? Six Q. Six Q. We'll marry it with this guy. When this guy comes here, it will add what? 66 what? Q. Q. And plus 400. When this guy comes this side, what will it do? Minus uh, 4,000. 1,000. All right. 
what are we going to have? Six Q. When we do this, we're going to get what? Plus sixty. Plus sixty. Q. Q. And these guys, what are we going to have? Four thousand six hundred. Thousand six hundred. Simplify by dividing by six throughout. What are we going to have? Q squared. Q squared. Plus ten. Q. Minus uh, six hundred. Whenever you reach this point, it becomes a quadratic equation. A quadratic equation, I'll pick it to your grade what? Grade five. When you have a quadratic equation, anything equal to zero. For instance, if you have, um, let's say, two Q squared, um, plus four Q minus six. This is a quadratic equation. Quadratic equation is given by the form ax squared plus bx plus c, where we use a general formula, x is equal to negative b plus minus b squared plus 4ac over qa. In this case, we need to identify a is simply anything that has a what? Square. So our A in this case would be two. B is anything to the power one. So B is what? Four. C is a constant. It's sine negative what? Six. What are we going to do here? Negative four plus or minus B squared. So four squared. And that's for AC. Where there's A, we put two. There's C, we put negative six. Over two A, our A is what? A is two. So here we're going to have negative four plus or minus. We have 16. So H times six is 48. Because of that negative, it a positive. 48 here and over two A. Two times two is four. So 16 plus 48, what do we get? 64. So negative four plus or minus the square root of 64, everything over four. You know that the square root of 64 is eight. So negative four plus or minus eight divided by what? The four. So whenever I have a quadratic equation, you have two answers. So it's either Q is equal to negative four minus eight over four, which is negative 12 over four, negative what? Negative three. Or the other would be negative four plus eight over four. So simply be four over four to be positive one. But when you're dealing with quantities, you can't pick a negative quantity, you pick a positive quantity. So if this was our total revenue, the revenue that maximizes one unit, not negative three. So in our context, just calculated and got our function as Q2 plus 10Q plus minus 600. So help me now. Q squared plus 10 Q minus 600. Help me identify which one is our A? A is one. So one. B. B. 10. 10. And C? 600. 600. All right. What's the general formula? Minus B plus minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So here, of what? Minus 10 uh -huh. plus square root 10 squared uh -huh. 
minus four one mm -hmm. six minus six hundred mm -hmm. over two by one. Mm -hmm. What we have here? Hundred. Mm -hmm. Two four. Mm -hmm. Two. Mm -hmm. Two five. Mm -hmm. The square root of two five. 50. 50. So what are the two options? Uh, Q could either be what? 40. 20. 40 divided by 2. So this one is giving us what? That's a 60 over 230. Mm -hmm. Then this one. That's 40 over 220. Which quantity do we get? The positive one. Since it's a the positive quantity. All right. So this is amount of quantity that will maximize our, our profit. Are we following? Yeah. This is exactly what you're supposed to do. When you complete that, this is what he did. And you get two values. 80 and 20, so we keep what? 20. So you get your five marks for that. All right. They ask you what is the actual profit. You substitute this in the profit function. You give me the value of the profit. So how do we come up with the value of the profit? Profit is total revenue minus total cost. So make sure that you put total cost in brackets because the negative negates the issues there. So we have what? 4,000 minus none. And this negative comes in and you take the lifetime together. You come up with the actual profit function is this one. So when they ask, ask you to find maximum profit, where there's Q, you put 20, 20, 20, 20. Now, the other way of optimizing, we know that we just find the margin of profit and equate it to zero. Remember what I told you, eh? Profit over the what? Q to zero. When you differentiate once, use profit one apostrophe. When you differentiate twice, you put exclamation mark. So this is just a shortcut of saying we differentiated once. So minus Q cubed becomes minus six Q. And 30q squared becomes 60. 600q becomes 600. 5000 becomes a zero, zero. So this one we divide by six throughout. We're going to have this equation. All right, when you get it, you will do this is completely the square method. You found q is equal to negative 30 and q is positive what? Positive. Um, so we're going to put 20 as a point that will maximize your profit. The question is, suppose both of them were positive. What do we do? Differentiate for the second time this function. And you equate these two answers. The answer that will give you a negative is one you because that is called the maxima. I repeat, if both answers are positive, what do we do? Do we pick the bigger one? No, no, no. Differentiate yeah, for the second time. So I exclamation max. So negative six Q2 will become negative four of Q. And negative 60 becomes negative 60. The race becomes positive. If we quit, 30 in here, 20 in there. The answer that will give you a negative is what you call the maxima. Called maxima. One that gives you a positive, you don't pick it up. Right. So, enough for today. 
I will end here and I'll give you classwork. Yes, sir, any questions at this point? Please ask now or forever hold your peace. It's the last explanation. You said uh, when we find two, two values that are both positive, we, 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 we differentiate the second time. Yes. And when we, when we differentiate for the, the second derivative, we, uh -huh. we have to find, uh, we have to go with the, the negative number. Value that gives you a negative value of the second derivative, you can put this one in there. All right. Start with, these are semifinals. When one is negative and one is positive, automatically disqualify the negative one. We'll just pick this one because we don't have a negative quantity. Both are positives. We go to the finals. We substitute these figures in the second derivative. One that inputs and gives you the value answer, which is negative, is what you pick. What if we both get positives or negative? That scenario is impossible. All right. So I made myself clear? Yes. All right. So I'll give you some homework based on what we have just done. Please don't embarrass me. Do a very good job. I will end here.